Hey, Math 31, I had a question coming from section 2.7, number 29. So I thought I would take a look at it. We have a three-part inequality here, and we need to figure out how to solve it. And since it's a little bit funky, you can kind of see I have a variable term on the left side, the middle and the right side of my three-part inequality. So what I decided to do is break this up into two separate inequalities. You see here I have the left side in the middle, and then I have the right side in the middle. Actually, let me do that one in a different color just so we can keep track of this. And so what I did was I solved those two inequalities separately. So let me, since I'm on the purple color, I'll keep this here. You can see I solved that one, second inequality there, and if I switch back to pink, here I am solving my first inequality. So when I have those two, what I want to do ultimately is see where does this inequality on the number line match this inequality on the number line? Where is their intersection? Because if I can figure out where they overlap, then I can get a general solution to my original three-part inequality. So if we were to go ahead and just draw some number lines here, let me do this. So if I was to take a look at the first one, where it had x was greater than negative six. If I go to the number line, right, I've got negative six here, and I wanna shade to the right because that's talking about everything greater than negative six. All right, fantastic. But now let's try the other inequality. So let me draw a number line again. And this inequality was the inequality x is greater than negative two. So that would happen around here on the number line, and again, I would shade to the right. All right, so the deal is, in order for my three-part inequality over here to be true, both of these inequalities have to be true at the same time. So if we start to look at where they intersect, or another way to say that, let me use this is, let me use a different color. Oops. Where, oh, that's too light. Let me get green. Where do these, two number lines overlap. Meaning, when are they true at the same time? So when do these two number lines overlap? Because I need a number that's greater than negative six to satisfy this first inequality, and I need one that's also greater than negative two. Well, if you take a look at where they overlap, it's from here on up. You can see that in this green square, I have both the pink line going and the purple line going. And a way of saying that, a simpler way of saying that is just as long as my number is greater than negative two, then I'm good to go. And, and if I say a number is greater than negative two, keep in mind if we're gonna write our interval from low to high, the lowest number, sure enough, is negative two and the highest number is positive infinity. And that's where I'm getting this solution over here. And you can also think about it as any number that is greater than negative two is automatically greater than negative six. So this one here, this inequality is actually the stronger statement. But ultimately, when I want numbers to be greater than negative two, and I wanna write them up in interval notation, we're going from negative two to infinity. All right, thanks so much, gang, bye.